Hey everyone, it's Group Science here. What this is, this is a video response to um, Veritasium's latest video. Basically, he uploaded um, four riddles that you'd like that you can try to solve. Um, so he said you can either post in the comments of his video, which will be in the description, but either post comments in his video or do a video response. That's, so that's what I'm doing. But instead of just guessing the riddles, I'm going to put them to the test and see if I can work them out, what will actually happen or what it actually is. So let's do it. All right, so for the first riddle, it was a mystery cylinder full of something. This is what I've got. This is um, a potential answer. But basically what happened in the video was um, Derek from Veritasium, he had a cylinder. Well, first of all, he showed you that there's nothing going on that any normal thing would just roll straight down. But then he came up with a mystery cylinder and he rolled it down. What the cylinder did was it rolled, then stopped, then rolled, then stopped, rolled, stopped, etc, etc. So my answer is a high viscous liquid of some form, like non-Newtonian fluid, like oobleck. But I, I didn't have any cornstarch to make any oobleck, so what I got here is glue. This is like, um, it's just, craft glue it's just a lot of that and so I'm gonna see if I can make this do the same thing happened that happened in Derek's video rolls stops rolls stops look at that oh it looks like it's come to a complete halt there maybe the ramp isn't quite steep enough So you can see that it's pretty much doing what it did in the video. So that's my answer to the first one, just a high viscosity liquid such as oobleck or glue. Okay, so, after, so now that we've finished that one, we'll go on to the second one. Alright, so for the next one, you can see I've got my bike there. Basically, Derek tied a string to the uh, bottom pedal on a bike and he says when you if you pull this string back horizontally will the bike go backwards go forwards or stay um, now before I do it I haven't done it yet I'm gonna make a prediction I reckon because you see to make a bike go forwards you have to pedal it like that and so pulling it back will just make it go forward, we'll make the back tire turn, but with force that's not part of the bike, so when you're riding it and using your legs to pedal, that is force that's part of the bike, I think, unless it is an outside force, but as far as I'm concerned, this is an outside force. So I reckon the amount of, because with every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, so if you pull this, the force that the bike from the wheel turning makes will equal the force pulling back and so it'll just cancel each other out so the bike will stay. That is my prediction. But anyway, let's test it. <coughs> so I'm going to pull it in three, two, one. Okay, I did not expect that. I'm going to try that again. Wow, okay, that was actually really interesting. Interesting, okay? That, that's funny, because I did not expect that at all. That, that was very, that was clever, very clever trick, but it goes backwards. I mean, I suppose it makes sense. I'm actually going to change the gears on this. Do it manually here. Alright, so for that first time, the uh, gears were up quite high. So they're now down to the lowest they can on a one here, on a one here. So I'm going to see if it does the same thing. I should probably adjust that. 
Alright, so you're ready? Pulling back in three, two, one. Yep. It just, it just goes backwards. Now, let me see. I suppose it does make sense because you go like this, and there's that initial, there's the friction of the wheel. If this was sitting up, the wheel wasn't even touching. Oops. Yeah, I assume it would go nowhere. Yeah, so the friction of the back wheel stops friction on the, of the back wheel touching the ground stops it from going forwards. And because the force here is greater then, after the friction, then that makes it go back. So if there's no friction here, which I did by lifting it up, but it would stay. But with the added friction, it goes backwards. That's my explanation. Hope that's right. So let's do the next one. All right, so the third riddle. Um, I'm not gonna bother explaining it right now. I'm just gonna let Derek explain it. So take it away. All right, so now that you've watched that, he said, first lap, you can run it as fast or as slow as you want. So that, and he defined that as V1. So I'm gonna say that I ran the first lap at five kilometers an hour. So that's basically just walking speed. So V1 equals 5. But then he said, how f for the second lap that you have to run faster than the first lap. So he said then, how fast would you have to run on your second lap to get the average of both of them to equal twice of V1? So it's got to be 5 plus, that's a bit... That's not working out. It's going to be 5 plus something divided by 2 to equal 10. So that is the equation. So I'm going to have the variable as x. So then, with a little bit of calculating, I can work out that 5 plus x equals 20. And so then x equals 15. So you have to be running three times faster, assuming you're running at five kilometers an hour. So I'm gonna now do the calculation again, except with a different starting value. And that different starting value is going to be 7.39 to be exact. This is just random. So you get 7.39 plus x equals, I'm just going to do it straight up, equals 20. Wait, I have done this wrong. Excuse me. <coughs> that 10 was double the first, so that means I need to go 7.39 times 2 equals 14.78. So if I do the equation again, that's 14.7. So let's divide that by 3. Oh, it's pretty close. 7.41. So I'm going to assume then the speed that you have to run on the second lap is three times the speed that you did on the first lap. Alright, so again I'm going to let Derek explain this fourth one. So, Alright, so the riddle was, as he said, the train, there's always one part that is moving backwards relative to the ground at any point. So, he said, he said which part? I'm going to try, if I can, I'm going to use some form of animation or some thing right here as visual while well, I'm also going to explain. Basically, you got train wheels, so I'm going to just have two wheels. You got a thing, everyone knows trains do this. But you can see, if the trains, because he said at any time, there's always one part that's going back. So basically, as the, as the 
I call it a stick, I don't actually know what it's called. I don't actually quite know how trains work exactly either, but basically you can see the stick goes around and it goes backwards at some point as the train's moving forwards. And if you have two of them on either side of the train, if they go at the same time, then my theory is out. But if they alternate, so I'm thinking that stick thing of the train, so one on one side of the train it goes forwards, the other side it goes backwards, then it sw swaps. So then the other side it goes forwards and backwards, so there's always one bit that's moving backwards relative to the ground. That is, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here, and that is my answer to the fourth riddle. So anyway, um, Derek, if you see this, I hope I got them right, and also for you guys who just watched this, I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, don't forget to give, give it a like, and I'll see you all next time.